there's around four months left until the start of the GCSE summer exam series, meaning we're at that awkward time of year, the time where it's too early to be thinking about exams. Maybe you still have mocks or you're still learning content, but it's also too late to just be laying back and not doing anything. And that's why what you do now in this period might make or break your success in your GCSEs. So here's exactly what to do in the next four months to jump to all nines in your GCSEs. Firstly, there's still enough time to change up and refine your studying technique. Although four months is not a lot, it's still enough time to figure out what's working and what's not. And so when it comes to refining your studying technique, the first thing you need to take into account is that every subject is different. I remember all the way up until year 10, I would study for every subject in the same exact way. Since I would naturally do better in STEM subjects, my studying technique was catered more towards problem solving type of subjects. And so I'd do really well in math, science, computer science, but then when it came to English, I'd really struggle. Eventually though, I had to accept that every single subject is different and if I wanted to be successful in English then I had to find a studying plan that complements it. When I finally found a plan that complements the nature of English that's when I started jumping from fives to eights. So it's worth sitting down and looking at all the subjects you take and ask yourself how are they different? Usually you could group them based on how much problem solving, memorization and essay writing is in each subject. And from there you could go on and find active studying techniques that work with the nature of each subject. You might ask well how do I know if a technique is active? Well the way I think about it is very simple. You have to actually engage with the content. Let's think of the passive studying techniques, reading and highlighting. They don't have you actually engaging with information. You sit down, read the textbook, say, oh yeah, this is important, let me highlight it. But all of that doesn't actually benefit you. Active studying techniques, on the other hand, for example, flashcards and blurting, they force you to engage with the information and that gives your brain a reason to store it. There's a lot of active techniques out there and you could get lost in them, but I like to keep my routine very simple, which is why for all of GCSEs and A-levels, I only used flashcards and practice questions. And a lot of people ask if there's still time for them to make flashcards or should they just use pre-made flashcards? I always recommend making your own. In my opinion, a lot of the learning doesn't only happen when you go through the flashcards, it also happens when you make them. When you go through a flashcard, all it does is just remind you of the first time you learned that information which was when you made the flashcard and so even though it takes a lot of time there's a lot of benefit in making your own flashcards also when you use a digital flashcard maker that gives you the ability to go through your flashcards wherever you are if you have a physical deck of flashcards it's easy to just forget them or not even bother to carry them wherever you go but if they're digital all you do is just pull out your phone open the app and just go through the flashcards wherever you are using digital flashcards was one of the reasons why i was able to study less than an hour a day and still get the top grades because i'd use some of the wasted time throughout my day for example just in the car or in the bus or whatever to go through flashcards instead of just scrolling through my phone and that reduces the need for me to sit down on my desk just to go through flashcards we can break down the learning process into two separate parts understanding the content and then applying it flashcards are really good for initially going through and understanding the content but to apply it you have to use practice questions over the next four months you should start looking at doing practice questions if you haven't already the initial phase of the next four months will include a lot of going through the content and understanding it and that might be through flashcards but then as the exam gets closer you have to do more and more practice questions to really consolidate the information you're learning. And don't fall into the trap of, I don't really want to do practice questions, I'll just memorize all of the information I need and I'll ace the exam. Exam boards don't expect you to just recall the whole syllabus. Instead, they give you scenarios which challenge you to get the correct information you learned and then apply it in a very specific way. And the only way you can learn the skill of applying the information is just to get the reps in. I could teach you everything about kicking a football correctly, where you hit it, which part of your foot you use, the follow through, but no matter what, your first ever kick will be bad. The only way you get better at kicking the ball is just to go out and kick it as many times as possible with the correct feedback. Likewise, you can memorize the whole syllabus, but you'll never be able to apply the information correctly unless you've practiced. And I know doing practice questions is boring, but that's why you need to space it out over the next four months. Instead of waiting until the last two weeks to do practice questions, why don't you instead do one paper a week so you space it out and you don't give yourself two weeks of hell. That way you're studying effectively while at the same time not burning out. That leads me on to my last point, which is it's essential to take care of your lifestyle outside of studying. Even if you have the most advanced studying techniques in the world, if you don't get your sleep in check, you're never going to get the top grades. Fixing your sleep alone can give you a jump of two or even three grades. If you really look into it, the information we learn in the day is only really cemented in our brains during our sleep. And so if you're not sleeping right, you're not actually completing the learning process. It's like you making a cake. You bring all the ingredients together, you put it in a cake pan, but instead of putting it in the oven, you just leave it on the countertop. Would you then be surprised if you come back a day later and it's still not baked? Likewise, all of the studying you're doing during the day is only bringing the ingredients together. It's only bringing the information together. But you have to sleep to properly allow the information to be brought together in your brain. Likewise, exercise is a huge factor as well. There's multiple studies that talk about the mental benefit of exercise. When you exercise, hormones and endorphins are released, which directly correlate to how you do in an exam or how you do while studying. So when everyone else is trying to put more hours into their revision, but they're neglecting their sleep and their exercise, you can gain an edge over them by taking care of the lifestyle factors that directly affect your studying and if you're really serious about getting the top grades in your GCSEs then I created a program that explains everything from A to Z in your journey of getting the top grades. 
haven't seen anything like it on the internet because most people focus on the content itself, not how to actually use the content. And that's why I decided to make this program. And so if you're interested, click the first link in the description.